So you know when you have that one friend object that you've had for quite a long time and you're, you're happy with it, but you're like, oh, I could do better? Uh, yeah, so that's this guy. This is a T3485 made by Academy. I built it uh, years ago, question mark. It's actually my second armor model that I've made. I used some pigments instead of any frost washes, so it's a little bit weird, but I was pretty happy with it. Other than uh, one day recently, I accidentally knocked it over and it fell and broke off some of the track covers and some tool stuff. So since it's broken, I figured I'd go ahead and repaint it. I'd already started doing some of the new grab handles with some copper wire. Um, and then I figured, you know what, let's actually start recording this, make it interesting. And in order to make it a little more interesting, I'm going to use paint that I don't really care for. I guess with exception of like some clears and washes and primer. Um, so just color paints are going to be made, are going to be done with mission models. That paint's kind of weird sometimes. Um, if you've ever used it and it worked well for you, let me know because I always struggle with it. It sprays great, but until I go brushing, it's... It, it, uh, eh. Anyway, let's prime this thing. Using some Createx Autoborn Sealer in gray, I just sprayed the crap out of it just to see what the model looks like in its current state. And for the most part, I was okay with everything I saw. There were some areas where I think when I was drilling the uh, copper wire holes, I, I must have slipped or something. So I'm going to have to fill those in as well as the track covers, uh, they need a little bit of work. I also noticed while spraying there's this weird blue dot thingy, actually two of them, that keep showing up and I don't know what it is, I'm assuming it's an oil or something, but it's there, uh, we'll deal with it. After giving it a once over with a primer, let's repair the machine gun. I have no clue what it used to look like, I, I, yeah, I don't have the guide or book or anything, so I just grabbed a paper clip, cut it off and glued it in there. It's good enough for what I'm doing. After super gluing that in, let's actually address some of the holes and pock marks that I want to at least fill in somewhat. Um, I did try using a little bit of a color paint to see if that blue marks would go away, so don't mind that. Um, just using some Tamiya white putty, we're just going to smear it on there and eventually sand it off. And I really don't like doing any filling in. It's a pain to get it nice and looking fine, but in this case, I can get away with it because when I do some rust tones and rust effects, it should either make it more visible or at least help it blend in or, I don't know, hopefully it'll be good. And it should look something like this. Color. I'm going to be using some Mission Models Russian Dark Olive. And immediately, I'm pretty sure I mixed it wrong because it was acting really watery and like a dye, not actual paint. Eh, this paint's not my favorite. So after wiping all my paint problems away, let's start over. That's a lot better this time. So what I did was grab some Createx satin and add it to the mix. And that gave it some kind of, I guess, protective barrier to help it not flow everywhere and be a pain. Originally, I had planned on doing a finished T-34, like one of the captured ones, but I wasn't sure if they had actually captured an 85 variant, so I kind of was like, yeah, I don't think I can go that route. Either way, here's the hull and turret with its one coat on there. Um, I did go back and spray some more of that satin to really make it shiny, and it, mm, not a great idea. Moving down to the tracks and wheels, they got the same Russian dark gray color on the interior of the wheels, and then I grabbed some dark gray and carefully sprayed over the entirety of the tracks. This was kind of a pain as it really wasn't spraying, it was spraying smoothly, but it just wasn't getting the coverage it needed. I mean, I probably went over it like four or five times. And when I was doing some touch-ups, just brush painting this stuff if you don't add any varnish to it. It is so fragile that when you add the second coat, it'll actually lift the paint below it. What a pain. Anyway, after grabbing some Panzer Growl, I filled in the rubber sections on the road wheels. In total, they should look something like this. Moving back up to the top, specifically the turret at least, Let's knock down some of that shine that I created. 
This is the Createx 4052 UVLS Matte Clear. Mouthful again, but hey, it's really good clear and definitely not Mission Models. And then, definitely not because I didn't care for the color, we can add some color modulation on top of that base color. So I'm using some US Army Olive Drab. It's the faded number two. The US Army Olive Drab. And then some Dunkel Gelb. I wish I could tell you what ratios I did, but just like always, it's kind of a, you know, whatever I feel like at that moment. So this is the color we'll end up with. It'll also get mixed with some of that Createx 4052, which should help take down any extra shine that's still going on. And then we'll spray the top section kind of in a cloudy pattern, as well as handle some of the sides just to give it some color all around. Now let me put the turret back on the hull just so we can see some of the differences here and kind of show what it's hard to really visualize. The lower hull was done in basically the same way. I won't show everything, just a little bit of here and there. I thought I could use a little bit more of a brighter highlight, so I added some Dunkel Gelb into the paint mix. If we compare it against the what's left in my airbrush, we can see it's definitely just a nice touch lighter, a little bit less saturated, should be good. This was then sprayed in a much more random, but very only the top sections pattern. That's not a pattern, but I'm calling it that. For the most part, it was things that I really wanted to show off and then like just some really random bright patches here and there on the flat sections. So let's take a look. We can see we've got some shadows in the darker lower areas, but then what's up top is nice and bright and vibrant. So now we can grab the road wheels, throw it on a turntable, and take a look at what we got. All in all, this process slash reminder of Mission Models paint has been actually fun so far. I mean, there's been problems, but for what it is, it's been pretty good. Now this is where I'm going to end it here for painting purposes. I will have a part two coming up about washes and some rust effects, dust, whatever. In that video, I'll use just a little bit more Mission Models, but everything else will be my more normal stuff that I'm used to. And if you have some experience with mission models and it went well for you, let me know in the comments what I did wrong. If it went poorly for you, I guess we can have a pity party. Yay. And I will see you in the next one.